Hey guys, this is Hazard502. Welcome back to another knife video. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We are doing a triple header with three different work tough gear fixed blades. And the ones that we're looking at are the work tough gear wilderness warrior, the work tough gear mountain lion, and the work tough gear lamigo. So let's take a quick moment and go over some dimensions and specs of these blades. So the materials on each of these, starting with the Wilderness Warrior, we have a blade steel of SK85, which is a high carbon steel. Um, it is prone to potential rust, which is why you have the traction, um, low traction coating on this one, actually. Um, the, the coating on the Wilderness Warrior is probably the smoothest and least obtrusive coating I've had on any flix, fixed blade. Um, it does not impede cutting performance in any way shape or form that I've discovered so that is probably some of the best blade coating that I've seen uh, we have a handle material of g10 with red liners you can see there and we can have it'll have a glue and bolt-on construction next for the mountain line we have a seal of sk329 which you can see the mark there um, this is a bit of a departure from the SK85, which has been the primary steel that WorkTough has gone with. Um, this is a tool steel, whereas the SK85 is a high carbon steel. Uh, the difference with this one is that it is it has some stainless properties to it, also while remaining very tough and robust, which is why this one doesn't have a particular coating on it. Handle material is G10, and you can see... These are going to be all full tang bolt-on construction. And then for the Lamigo, uh, this is again SK85. I'm not sure if we can capture the blade designation, uh, uh, blade steel designation it is right there. Um, handle material is brown micarta. No liners on this one either. And you can see that this one has a coating on it as well. Uh, I would say that this one is not quite as smooth. There is a little bit of grab, nothing to note of as far as cutting goes, but it's definitely not as smooth. Um, and I'd say as refined as the one on the Wilderness Warrior. All right, let's talk about carry systems for each of these Work Tough blades. Work Tough Gear does an amazing job with their Codex sheaths. They are great material, Great construction, great fit and finish, very secure retention um, for each knife. There's no additional strapping included. I have I don't have the room on camera here. Uh, I have done a shake a vertical shake test, and they do not budge or or move at all in any of the sheathing systems here. Uh, with the Wilderness Warrior, has a drain hole at the bottom, full over style. Kydex sheath, uh, belt loop system that is reversible from left to right carry. Right now this is set up to be carried on your left hip. Um, and yeah, great retention. Great fit in the sheath. And if I didn't mention it, it is reversible. And this, these particular belt loops um, are removable so you can, it has a snap. And velcro so you can take them on and off your belt without having to remove your belt all three of these feature that and i just love the ride height um, sits fairly low on the hip um, close to the belt line which i really appreciate the lamigo is very similar it has pretty much the identical belt loop as the pardon me as the wilderness warrior 
reversible left or right. I do believe the lashing points here are tech lock compatible. Drain hole at the bottom here as well. And again, nearly the perfect ride height um, for my preference. Even if the belt loop were to move up higher um, or even with the top of the handle and sit even lower on your hip, I'd enjoy that more. Um, but again, just wonderful retention, fit and finish in the sheath. Excellent job. The mountain line is a little bit different. Um, they decided to go with a bit of a different uh, carry system with this one. You can see this one's more of a pancake style uh, Kydex sheath instead of a fold over. This one out of the box comes with four D loops, uh, one at each top corner, one at each bottom corner, and it has a strap uh, that comes with the packaging for over the shoulder carry or sling carry. Not really too into that. Um, the alternative option is this uh, tech lock style of um, bell clip, which works fine. Um, the one thing that I don't like about that too is that it doesn't allow for um, low carry on the hip. Once this is on your belt, this is going to be quite a bit high into your rib cage, depending on what you're doing, where you're going, what kind of activity you're into. Um, however, the other counterpoint to that is that you are probably, not probably, you are able to mount this in a variety of orientations for cross draw, vertical draw, um, and it just gives you more variety in that respects, which I do carry um, cross draw and vertical draw every once in a while. So I do like the versatility, but again, the retention, the fit and finish, and the secure, um, just how secure each of these sheathing systems are is excellent. Really enjoy them all. Do prefer the uh, low ride belt carry, but this is a uh, nice step to try and something different, even though it's not necessarily my preference. All right, let's take a closer look at these beautifully sculpted blades. With the Wilderness Warrior, you can see that we have a high flat grind with a beautiful fuller running almost the entire length of the blade. Nice drop point, clip point style um, tip on here. And uh, just a very aesthetically, just a beautiful looking blade. And then handle again, G10. We have some scallops at the front for a pinch grip, obviously the finger choil there to choke up on the blade. And we have a bow drill, bow drill divot, pardon me, that is located on each side of the handle itself. Grip room on this one is the most generous of the three. You have plenty enough room to choke forward. Of course, there's the go forward position with the finger choil. And then if you were to choke back, you have the most ex, pardon me, the most generous space um, if you're going to wear gloves or if you have larger hands. Good example to tell the difference um, in the grip area. If I choke back to a natural, comfortable position on the handle, you can see that I have enough room to fit comfortably my thumb in the front position there. So most, the most handle room um, with this one. Next with the Lamigo, you can see that this is more of a high saber grind. So a little bit more stoutness in the steel at this point here. Um, it looks like there's a bit of a, a hint of a recurve um, at this point in the blade, but it is very subtle if that. Plenty of steel out of the tip there, lots of strength. I think all three of these strike a very fine balance of stri tip strength, but also good piercing capability. Of course, finger twirl on this one as well for that go forward position for choke up, more fine detail work. And then a, the brown micarta handle. Again, if I choke back to the most rear, rearward position where I feel it's natural and comfortable, not necessarily a, a choke back chopping grip, but just within the handle space itself. I can still get my thumb um, up top for a fifth finger space, just a little bit tighter than on the Wilderness Warrior. And then with the mountain line, you can see that it is a high flat grind. 
Um, a bit of drop, pardon me, drop point style blade similar to the Wilderness Warrior. Generous finger choil. This one has the most spacious finger choil out of the out of the bunch. Um, I can really get my finger nested in there, and it definitely gives me the most safety space between my finger and the heel of the blade there. And um, I'd say that this one has the mount line has the most secure grip. You can see how the uh, finger choil really curves around aggressively. Um, at the front, and I'd say not as aggressive as the Wilderness Warrior at, at the heel of the handle, but when you get your hand in there, it feels extremely locked in place. However, the potential drawback for this one is that it has the least grip room of the three. So again, if I slide my hand back to where I feel it's natural and secure, I actually can't really get my thumb um, inside the handle space, just as, uh, as an example of the difference between the grip room. Um, my hands are large size, so plenty of room overall. If you have smaller hands, you're going to have probably that extra finger space as well. Um, so just a note on that, that the, uh, the grip room on this one is um, a little bit less than the other two. Move back to the Wilderness Warrior. You can see that we have some jimping on the back of the spine where it meets the handle. And of course you have a lanyard spot along the back with a protruding tang. Lamigo, same thing, has some jimping as well. It is uh, subtle, um, almost a little bit smooth. It's more file-like jimping, not quite as grabby, but it's there, it's comfortable. Um, I'd say not as effective as the Wilderness Warrior, but it's there if you if you need it. Um, again, lanyard spot in the back with a bit of a protruding tang as well. And then on the mountain lion, smooth spine, bit of a ramp there. Overall, pretty smooth though. Um, I haven't found that jimping along the spine is necessary really for any fixed blade. It's nice if it's there, but I don't find that I'm missing it if it's not there. And then this one has a cool feature. It's got a hidden lanyard post in the handle. A little bit less of a protruding tang, though, if you are looking for other ways to motivate material. What you'll find if you end up picking one up is that the machining, the milling, the grind lines, the symmetry, the fit and finish and the cutting edge itself is all very even and symmetrical and nearly perfectly done. In fact, I can't even really find a flaw to point out to you guys where there's something that wasn't constructed quite correctly. They are all, they all have a very high attention to detail and fit and finish. The Wilderness Warrior tends to lean towards a more combative feeling knife. The Lemigo strikes a good balance between how easy it is to wield, how light it feels in the hand, compared to the Mountain Lion, which is the bruiser of the group, the heavy hitter. Um, this one seems to straddle the line between having some heavy capability yet having the ability to reach over into the lighter and finer tasks, which this is this one's strength, um, the Wilderness Warrior, whereas the Mountain Lion is the big guy, the big brother in the group. But the Lamigo also has the ability to stretch out and reach over and uh, deal with tasks similar to this one. So I'm gonna roll in some footage of putting the three of these to a little bit of work just to emphasize that point. With the Wilderness Warrior, having the majority of the weight in the back of the handle doesn't quite transfer the same amount of energy compared to the other two, and if we don't get quite the chopping power. The 
with the Lamigo, it has a nice balance between the other two blades. Um, secure grip, good transfer of weight into the blade, and provides a little bit better chopping power than the Wilderness Warrior. And then we have the Mountain Lion, which is, as I've mentioned, the bruiser of the group, the big guy. A lot of confidence with the chopping ability and more effectiveness per chop per cut and uh, definitely in the leader as far as the heavy hitting goes and then you can see here this is just a good example of the effectiveness when you're using them for chopping tasks that um, wilderness warrior lamigo and mountain lion um, just have different strengths when it comes to this type of blade performance Another interesting way to kind of distinguish the individual personalities of each of these knives is where their balance point is um, between the handle and the blade. So starting with the Wilderness Warrior, if I'm going to balance this out in my hand, um, you can see it's back in the handle area. So when you're gripping it, um, the natural balance and weight seems to be in the handle so it wants to lean back this way making the blade very light and maneuverable and quick when we move on to the lamigo the balance point on this one is a little bit further forward uh, right at the finger guard so if i move my hand forward you can see that the balance point is about there so when i grab it if i'm going to choke back on the knife the weight wants to go into the blade and if we move on to the mountain line you can probably guess already that the balance point is even further ahead on this one compared to the other two so if i move my finger forward it's right into the choil area so if i were to choke back on this one as well all the weight wants to lean into the blade making a blade heavy um, just helping it lean towards being a heavier hitting, harder to use knife compared to the other two there. All right, my overall conclusion with these blades from Work Tough Gear is that they are all three excellent, excellent knives. If I had to rank them from my favorite to my not so favorite, even though all three are wonderful, most certainly I would pick the Mountain Line first the Lamigo second, and the Wilderness Warrior third. All three are beautiful. All three have amazing sheathing systems, but aesthetically, the balance point and the overall performance, um, this is really what speaks to me the most. And I do really like how the Lamigo has the ability to reach up and reach down into the strengths of the other two blades, making it very versatile. Um, with the Wilderness Warrior being the lighter, more combative feeling knife. Which I know that when they constructed this, that wasn't their intention. It's meant to be an uh, outdoor adventure knife like all the rest of them here. But um, between the three, most certainly the Mountain Lion is the one that speaks to me the most. Now one thing that we need to talk about is that if you're not familiar with Work Tough Gear, they are a smaller, more boutique fixed blade company um, and so what you need to do or be aware of is that they make their knives in batches so they will um, construct the mountain line do a run of them sell out of that run then make another knife make a batch of those sell them they'll run out and they'll move on to the next one um, they will do multiple styles at one time as well or say all three of these may be available, but once the quality, the quantity that they have made sells out, then they may move on to another knife design before they eventually circle back and um, make these again. So each one of these is a first production run. Um, they have done a second run of the Wilderness Warrior, but there has not been a second run of the Lumigo um, or the Mountain Lion. Uh, the Mountain Line is the newest of the group, and there are a few available. Last I checked as of the recording of this video, but I believe the other two designs are sold out. Um, maybe there might be a few of the second run of these available. 
Having said that, what you should do is be sure to follow Work Tough Gear on all of their social media pages, IG, Facebook. I'm going to uh, link um, all three of these at the Work Tough Gear website. And I will also put a link to the Facebook groups. Um, it'll be important for you to follow along and just keep track of production times, release dates, so that you're able to um, just be prepared to jump on one when it becomes available. I've been extremely happy with the three of these and I'm always looking at Work Tough Gear as far as what they have and what they might be coming out with because I'm just really drawn to them. So guys, I want to thank you for stopping by, checking out the video. Hopefully you found it informative and entertaining and I really appreciate you being here and we will catch you in the next one.